So that is all the Milwaukee power tools we've got. I'm Jonathan here at the Shadow Foam Workshop and in this video we're going to be taking all of this and creating an epic Milwaukee power tool wall. Big thanks to Power Tool Mate for sending all of these and making this video possible, but let's get into it. Right, so this is where we're going to be installing the Power Tool wall. This area has been finished for a while and this kind of recess here has been crying out for a Power Tool wall. We fitted this lower rail which is going to support the weight of the foam and the tools. So all we need to do is get Mike to cut some foam. Right, so that's the foam cut, but if you're enjoying this video, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our future videos. Right, so we've got the foam, a 30mm and a 70mm. What we'll do now is we'll put these 30mm backer in place, then we'll take the thicker sheet, we'll put a layout together, and then we can start cutting. Three hours later. Right, so that's the layout done, and I'm pretty happy with that. We've left space in the middle for a logo, so all that's left to do is get cutting. So all you need for that is one of our cutting kits. That's got everything you need in it to cut foam. It's got a scalpel, it's got the repair glue, it's got blades, instructions, and some stickers. So that's everything you need to cut shadow foam. But seeing as we've got so much shadow foam to cut here, there is a lot of items. I think I'm gonna need some help. So you may remember Dylan from our Teaching the Apprentice video. Oh, it looks like I've got a bit of a problem here. Well, he's still here and he's gonna help me cutting this power tool wall today. And cameraman Matt, you gonna help as well? You can't just sit there filming it. You're gonna help as well today, so that's amazing. And yeah, that's it. So make sure you've got your anti-cut gloves on before you start cutting. And all we have to do is place the item where we want it to go, cut around it, and then peel back the foam. But for this, actually, most of these items are that deep. We're going to have to cut all the way through the foam and then put a backer on. So we'll get cutting, and then we'll come back to you and show you how we're going to do that. Right then, so that is, I've got one, two, three, four, five items done on this side. Looks like you've made some progress over here. Looks pretty good. I thought I gave you a scalpel, have you done this with your teeth? <laughs> no, that, fair play, that's pretty good. And then Matt, this is, you've not really cut much foam, have you mate? And you've, what, have you used a spoon for yours, have you? There is no spoon. Nah, you've done a good job guys, honestly. I think you're gonna save me a lot of time, so that's a good start. But before we get any further, I want to cut this logo in because obviously the items that are going to go around it are determined by where that shield position is. And we, what we want to do is put the shield in the exact same position as the one we've got in the Makita wall so that the two of them match up really nicely together. It's 39 centimetres down on the other one, so we'll put this one in the same height on the board. We've printed it off the exact same size as the Makita wall one, so they should look like a matched pair. And then we're just going to tape it on with a little bit of tape. And this is why it's really important to take a photograph of your layout, because if you don't, when you come to start moving everything around for something like this, you forget what the heck you're doing. We've got 39 centimetres from the top, and then it's 70, thanks for that mate, 70 there. And then 65, so we want to split the difference, so it's two centimetres over. So it's 68 and a half. Frick me, that's like bang on. I nailed that, that's amazing. Wow. Wow. Right, so all you have to do, once you've got your logo in position and you're happy with it, all you have to do then is start with the center details. So if I cut the outside of the shield here, then it would all move. So I'm gonna cut that last. The same would apply if, the, if I was doing like a letter A and there was like the center of an A, you'd cut the center first. For this though, we've got three shapes to cut and we're gonna do those three first and then we're gonna cut around the outside of the shield. So all we have to do is just follow the logo, nice and tight to the line. We don't have to cut very deep. We just wanna make sure we're sticking to the line. And ideally you just want to drag the scalpel and not use it like a saw. If you've got a fresh blade in, it should just cut smoothly like butter and you'll get a much cleaner finish if you just drag the scalpel through rather than sawing it through. And we'll just carry on with the rest of it. Right, so we've peeled back all of the foam, and as you can see, it's not quite as smooth as I'd like it. 
So we're going to use some of our foam smoothing spinners. These are only cheap, they're available on shadowfoam.com and you just literally slot them into any drill or this is an impact driver which is the best way to use it. And then we just use that and skim out any lumps and bumps that we've got to get a really smooth finish. Right, so that's all done. But with this one, we're not going to leave it there like we usually would. We've done logos in the past. We've cut all the way through and that's enough. But we want this panel to match the existing Makita foam panel that we did. Now in that one, we used a 70 mil black foam sheet. So when we cut the logo in, we didn't have a contrast. So we ended up cutting the same logo again in like an inverted color. And then we pushed that into the gap that we created. So we'll do the same with this, but we'll use teal. So we're going to cut the logo in the exact same size into the teal, peel back a layer and then stick it in there. And that'll give us the same visual look as the other panel. So they both look matching. Now we've done that. Let's get back on to cutting the tools in. Right, so that is all of the hard work done. We've cut all of the tools in, sparing this last one here, because we're gonna show you the process. For anyone who's uh, familiar with shadow foam, you'll know exactly what I'm about to tell you, cut and peel. But for anyone who's new around here, all you have to do is place the item where you want it to go, use the scalpel that comes in the cutting kit. Cutting kits come with most orders. They're bundled in, there's loads of different offers on the website, shadowfoam.com. So you place the item where you want it to go, and then all we're gonna do is put a little bit of light pressure on it so it doesn't move and then we're gonna cut around it with a scalpel. We're using the scalpel like a pencil. So we're just doing a light cut all the way around, trying to keep nice and close to the item and keeping the scalpel 90 degrees to the foam or perpendicular to the foam. And it doesn't matter how deep we go at this point, we're just trying to make sure we get as an accurate as possible outline of the item. Now once you've gone all the way around and you've met back up at the start, we can then move the item out of the way. And I could cut the center detail out, but I'm not gonna do that here because that's where we're gonna be able to lift the item out of. So once we've cut all the way around, all we have to do then is press down on the foam to expose the cut we've made and then go back and cut it in deeper. With this, we're, we're cutting into 70 mil foam here and we want to be cutting at least 50 mil down so we can peel out enough layers so that the tool is housed nice and tight in the foam. So when we put it up on the wall, it's not going to fall out and it's going to look really good. But once we've cut all the way around, we're going to start peeling and we do that by just pushing our finger down one side. I'll start over here and then we're just peeling the foam back towards us and just following it along, peeling it back. We're not starting at one end and peeling it like this, we're just chasing it along. And it doesn't matter how smooth these peel out at this point because we can go back and smooth it off afterwards. And at this point, we've got a few more layers to peel out anyway. So you can see that's the first couple of layers. We've peeled out about 20 mil already. So I'll chuck that in the recycling pile and we'll do the exact same process for the next few layers. Right, so that's enough foam pulled out, but you might notice there's a few areas that aren't quite as smooth as we'd like them. So we just take the impact driver with one of our foam smoothing spinners. These are only a couple of quid, they're off the website, shadowfoam.com. They're a quarter inch bit, and you just put them in an impact driver or a combi drill, and then we can just use that to smooth out some of the lumps and bumps. And with that, Everything is sorted and I love this. I think it's fantastic. All that's left is to get it up in the wall and see what it looks like. So let's do that. Right, that is the hard bit done and I think it's looking fantastic already. We've just added some spray glue to the back. That's to bond the 30 mil backer and the 70 mil front but we don't have to do anything else. That's kind of the beauty of shadow foam. If you've got it to the right size, it's quite a dense foam and we've just press fit that in there and it is held quite tightly without any fixings. I could add some fixings, but because it is so tight for this one, doesn't need anything. But all we've got to do now is the fun bit, which is getting all the tools back in the wall. And that is everything in, and that is already looking epic. To be fair though, the one thing that's standing out to me is I'm not too happy with this teal logo. I thought when I was doing it all on the table, I thought teal was a good choice, but I think I'm gonna change that. 
and that looks a lot better to me. I think the red really pops. I am so buzzing with how good that looks. I think that's got to be one of my favourite ever power tool walls. A great range of tools in there too. We've really maximised the space. There's a couple of things that are missing. You may have noticed we don't have a circular saw in there. We also don't have any batteries in there. But we'll be mounting the batteries on this wall here with some stealth mounts. We'll put a charger down here. We'll also probably put a circular saw on brackets. It's a bit bulky to get in the foam, usually a circular saw. But I'm loving how good that looks. And a big thank you to Power Tool Mate. All these tools came from the Power Tool Mate website and they hooked us up big time. So thank you so much to those guys for all your power tools, whether it is Milwaukee or if it's Makita, like this other beastie power tool wall we've done, or if it's Dewalt. Head over to Power Tool, mate. They've got a huge range of gear over there and some great prices. So a big thank you again for those guys. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much for watching. Click the bell icon so you don't miss any of our future videos. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like that video, why not check out some of our others? We've got new videos coming out every week. And Colin Furs, what's the quickest way for people to see these videos? That's subscribe. It.